The deeper I get into these Diamond Patch Club stories, the more I catch myself thinking, man, this guy has one hell of a scumbag. On the other hand, I also catch myself thinking, hey, that's a really solid individual right there. Now I've seen a couple of people and they've made videos on YouTube saying, oh, the most dangerous one percenter or the most this or that one percenter. I've never seen somebody make a video, the top scumbags from the one percent world. Who are the most distinguished dirt bags? Who's done their brothers the worst? Well, I have all that and much more. This is who I was, but it's definitely not who I am. Welcome to Vegas Profile Stories. Let's get it. All right, for today's list, we have five. Top five dirt bags to their brothers. Number five. So for this one, we're gonna start right on out in the green pasture. That's right, the Vagos. We got a man, they call Jabbers. This guy picks a fight in the middle of a casino floor and it ends with one of the rival beloved presidents of the Hells Angels being sent to the upper room. During this melee, Jethro, the San Jose charter president for the Hells Angels, he pulls out his banger, starts getting to work. Because of this, Jabber's brother Romeo has to come over, sneak up behind Jethro, put one in him, send him to the upper room. Never a good look. Now when all the dust settles, Romeo and Jabber's, obviously, they're off to the hokey. They gotta go fight this in court. This is when Jabber's, the man who started the entire melee, decided he couldn't do that time. He was gonna make up some elaborate story about how it was some kind of conspiracy and sold Romeo down the river, got Romeo a life sentence in Nevada. Now after appeals, Romeo's case is overturned. He's about to go face trial again. That's when we all know the feds pick up the case, put it in the RICO, try Romeo, and all of the top Vagos at the time, the national officers, put them all in the first round of the RICO. But at least when Jabbers got on the stand, he said, hey, I lied in the first trial. They didn't do this. So he tried to cover up his mistake. But at the end of the day, you still got Romeo, a life sentence, because he ended a brawl that you started. And for that, you're number five on our list, Jabbers. Number four. You guys like that voice? I did that myself. Number four, another well-known one. The only two that I think are pretty well-known. Mongols, National President Doc Kavasis. Come on, Doc. Now, Doc Scumbaggery, for me at least, it started in Laughlin. And what I mean by that is, sure, you see him all up in the fight. At the time, he's the National Sergeant at Arms. His one job in that is to protect the National President. How many times was the National President hit in Laughlin, people? They did the hokey pokey and turned him right around. Obviously, his Sergeant at Arms was not doing his job. Doc was not doing his job. Now, when the national press, he's away, he's healing from, from taking the hokey pokey, Doc moves in and takes his job. Like, what kind of scumbaggery is that? First, you don't protect the dude, and because he's healing, because you didn't protect him, you go on, you become national president. Now, what's the first thing Doc decides he's going to do? He starts bringing in people from, from street gangs. They don't even got to ride motorcycles. Nah, you don't got a bike? Nah, fool, don't even worry about it. Come put this vest on. It set the club back because the real Mongols are sitting here going, what the hell? And I've spoken to a, an ex-real Mongol, Mooch, my dude, who's just like, this is about the bikes. This is about the lifestyle. This is not about having numbers. And what Doc did was probably set the Mongols back at least five to 10 years, I would think. Now, congratulations to the Mongols. They got it all back together you know, got rid of all the trash, but still, man. Now, it doesn't stop there with Doc, either. Federal Rico comes down. Guess who the number one snitch was against the Mongols? Their own leader. What? How are you gonna lead men into doing stuff and then testify against them, Doc? Boy, if you don't get your trifling, I've never met Doc. I'm gonna say that right now. Never met the man, never talked to him. Never want to meet him, never want to talk to him. Allegedly, he's off in witness protection, but I don't know how much witness protection can... His face is everywhere. I mean, everybody knows what this guy looks like. He should have been number one on the list, but that would have been too easy. If you guys would have gone from five all the way down to one and seen Dr. Vosses, you'd have left the video 
and not even seen the story. Ha ha, gotcha. That's right. Hit them with the old okie doke. Not the hokey pokey, the okie doke. We're cutting that out too. That's garbage. Number three. We're working on that. It might sound good. I don't know. I won't know till post editing. Is that what it's called? Something. I don't know. I'm not a filmographer. What? Spell that shit, Rick. Don't say words you don't even know. Former Cape May chapter president of the Pagans, Chef Glick. Oh, you never heard about Chef, huh? Let me tell you a little story. As a chapter P, Chef Glick, he meets this doctor, Dr. Kaufman. Dr. Kaufman, he has himself a radio host wife, very popular, named April. One day, random act of violence, April sent to the upper room. Somebody took their banger out and sent that news lady or that radio lady to the upper room. What's going on in your life? You're just going to walk around taking out people from the radio. The radio? Now, police completely came up empty when it came to trying to figure out who did this to April. That is, until a new detective got onto the case and decided, I'm going to crack this one wide open. Now, Chef, he goes and gets himself caught. He's got illicit medicines and bangers. That's one of them things that you just don't want to get caught up with if you're the president of a major 1% club. Dude's out there living the life, gets caught up. All of a sudden, he don't want to live that life no more. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got something to tell you guys, but I'm gonna need your assurances that I'm gonna not have to do this time. Tell us what you got. Tell, uh, you know, they're all ears and he was all mouth. Now, apparently Dr. K, Dr. Kaufman, April's husband, he decided he didn't want to be with this woman no more. And the divorce, nah, it wasn't in the cards. He went to the Pagans, which he knew the, the national president of the Pagans at the time. He says, hey, I got 50 G's and as many scripts as you need me to fill out for you. Just throw mama off the train. National P, he says, all right, man, I'm the guy for the job. I'll find somebody. Now he doesn't go looking within the club, which probably should have done. It would have benefited the club a lot more and it would have helped with the silence factor aside from chef. Anyway, it goes, he goes outside the club. He gets himself somebody that's going to throw mama off the train. Bing, boom, bam, does it. Chef gets mad. Why did you send this out of the club? Well, he must have taken that and ran with it because he's like so bitter about it. He had to tell the feds, come on, chef. Now, the doctor, he couldn't take life no more. He decided he couldn't face this world in a prison cell. Anyway, it goes, he self-terminated, took himself right on out. Francis Mulholland, the actual hitman, he gone. And chef. Chef's looking all lonely in all these pictures, like, what did I do? What did I do? You got everybody caught up by running your mouth, chef. For that, you landed number three on this list. Your own national pee, bro. Whew. Reminds me of number two. Now, number two on this list is kind of a twofer. Downtown Johnny and Justin Forrester from the Banditos. Much like Chef with the Pagans, Downtown Johnny got himself caught with a whole bunch of illicit medicines. That's when he decided, I don't want to do this five to ten years on these illicit medicines. Get me somebody to talk to. He starts talking, and that just makes everything worse for him and for everybody. So he starts spilling the beans on club business, but not just a you know, inside his clubhouse. No, no, no. I'm gonna take down the national officers from my club for a whole slew of stuff because I don't wanna do this five to 10 years that I would have done on this illicit medicines charge. Oh, let's see how bad this goes. He decided he was gonna wear a wire. During that wire, he talked to the national president of the Banditos. What they talked about on that wire was used as evidence to get national president Jeffrey Pike a life sentence plus 10 years after he was convicted in the case. It wasn't the same for the national vice president. National vice president for the banditos, John Portillo, he got two life sentences plus 20 years for the evidence that was brought on by this wiretap in this case. All of it stemmed from the death of a Hells Angel. Two Hells Angels were seen in Texas riding around. Allegedly, they were gonna open up shop it is bandito heavy. It is other club heavy. Maybe they were there for that. Maybe they weren't. Anyway, it goes from what I hear, they were told, hey, maybe you shouldn't be wearing your cuts while you're riding around in our territory. Everything was cordial, but they also kept wearing their cuts. Next thing you know, one of these dudes 
is sitting outside at a diner eating with his wife and kids when a sniper round like a watermelon fellas now it also involved a man named robert laura being sent to the upper room allegedly it was in revenge for the death of a bandito and then of course he laid out how they were all in cahoots when it came to that little tussle that they had at that restaurant between them and the Cossacks, you know, the very public one. So when this case all came together, Justin Forrester, the other guy, well, he's the national sergeant at arms. Well, he decides I'm not doing this time. I'm going to go ahead with downtown Johnny. I'm becoming informant. I mean, never a smart move to snitch, but he only got five years. He only got five years for implicating himself in three people going to the upper room, a whole crazy melee at a restaurant. We're talking hundreds of rounds, whatever it was. I haven't really looked into the story deep, but I know kind of what I know about it. So he gets five years. Now what happens to downtown Johnny? Well, downtown Johnny and his brother, who was a prospect at the time, both testified in this case. Remember, they got caught in the beginning with illicit medicines and a couple of pow pals, probably looking at max 10 years. I don't think he was moving a ton. It's probably enough to get him 10 years in the feds. Well, instead he painted this whole picture. Well, he got himself 15 years for implicating himself in these cases. You dummy. You got yourself more time and you burned down the entire national officers club to get yourself five years more. His brother? Oh, he didn't get a better deal. He got 18 years. These idiots gave themselves 50 and 80% more time by talking about all of this. And for that, downtown Johnny from the Banditos, his prospect brother, and Justin Forrester, the former national sergeant at arms for the Banditos, are the number two biggest scumbags on my list. So who could be number one? <clears throat> I've struggled. I have struggled with even putting this video out, with even making this video all because of who number one is. Now, I'm not gonna say his name. I've uh, I've talked to a few active and non-active. All of them have said, don't say his name. Tell the story, don't say his name. Well, obviously his club brothers don't want me to tell the story either. Well, it needs to be told. I will not say the name of who's number one on this list. I've, I've given my word, I won't do it. So this guy is a well-loved, well-respected member of the Red and White. He has been there in some of the craziest situations for them. I had respect for him. He takes up with one of his club brothers from the Bay Area with that man's daughter. Now she's 18, 19 at the time, so it's not illegal. It's poor taste, but it's not illegal. And that, that alone is definitely not enough to be on this scumbag list. It helps the marinade. He gets her pregnant, marries her. He's driving down the freeway with her brother. Something happens, shots are fired. Brother has the same name as his father. He doesn't make it. He goes to the upper room. Now, what happened in that car? I don't know. Is that enough to make him the biggest scumbag? Oh no, 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 marinade. Fast forward a little bit. He goes away, he gets out. From what I'm hearing, meets up, with the under daughter of one of his other club brothers. Takes her off. It's not like he took it, but she's young. She's far too young for you to be doing something like this. Gets her pregnant. She has the baby. That's all the proof you need. Father hears about it. We're just gonna call the father T. T hears that his club brother just had a baby with his under daughter. T starts going around telling everybody, I'm gonna have to take care of him when I see him. I'm gonna send him to the upper room. Well, of course, everybody told old boy about it once he got back out of prison, that is. Well, he ambushes T in the clubhouse, ties him up. They smash him within an inch of his life. Eye hanging out, takes a tattoo gun, tattoos a dick into T's head. Now T ain't done nothing wrong, except for saying, hey, I'm gonna get this fool for what he did to my daughter. Keep that in mind. Tattoos a dick on the guy's face calls T's wife. You better come get him before I send him to the upper room. She rushes right over, tells T's wife, it ain't gonna suck itself. 
you want him or not. Commits us to doing whatever he wants. What's she going to do? She just wants to get her husband out of there. He's tied up while this is happening in front of him. Then this man goes and tells the entire club, oh, he got with my, my woman while, while I was away. That's what this is about. Y'all can hate me for putting this out, and I'm sure that you guys will. Nobody likes to know that they have somebody who they love that much that is this person. But you have a man that you love that much that is this person. And nobody else is going to tell this story. T's not talking. T's wife's not talking. T's daughter's not talking. Nobody's going to tell this story. He's going to be beloved forever. Most of you don't even know. Because he lied to you about how it went down. And I'll put it out there. This is how it went down. T didn't do nothing wrong. What happened to him is, is the worst scumbaggery I've ever heard of in the MC world. And for that, he who will remain unnamed out of respect for you guys is the number one scumbag I've ever heard of. Thank you for coming to Vegas Profile Stories. I appreciate each and every one of you. I hope you guys have an amazing day. And I'll see you next time.